Welcome back. My name is Kevin Tokoff on Catalyst University. Make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. In this video, we're going to discuss the synthesis of the lagging strand of DNA during DNA replication. Now, you can see in this picture here, we have what's called a leading strand, and down here is the lagging strand. The leading strand synthesis, which is up on the top, we're not going to cover in this video. It's very straightforward, very easy to understand. In fact, you can even kind of see it in this picture. The DNA polymerase, which happens to be DNA polymerase 1, just goes right along the DNA strand and synthesizes 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Very straightforward. The lagging strand is a lot more complicated. So the leading strand is synthesized continuously. It just, in this picture, it just goes left to right. So 5 prime to 3 prime, easy. The lagging strand is also synthesized 5 prime to 3 prime. That has to do with the mechanism down on the organic chemistry level, which we're not going to cover here. The point is, it has to be done 5 prime to 3 prime, but the problem is it still has to run in the same general direction, left to right. So to accomplish this, it's synthesized discontinuously. Now, I'm going to show you this picture, and then after I explain all of this, we're going to then go and watch a video. And the video makes a lot more sense than just this by itself. All right, so we have an enzyme called DNA primase. DNA primase generates relatively short complementary fragments of RNA called RNA primers. Okay, these green things in the picture right here on the lagging strand, the green things are the RNA primers. Okay, these RNA primers are complementary to parts of the DNA. Okay, and they hybridize to the to the lagging strand. Okay, you can see they're stuck on there. They're hybridized. Each of these RNA primers is about a thousand to two thousand bases apart. So the distance between this RNA primer right here and this right here is about a thousand to two thousand bases. All right. Now we have another enzyme called DNA polymerase three, also called Pol three. So Pol3 generates a complementary DNA strand between each RNA primer. So what Pol3 will do is, right here in my mouse is, right at the very edge of that RNA primer, it will just start synthesizing a DNA fragment going this way, all the way here, right up until the next primer. Now, this fragment of DNA that's red, this is called an Okazaki fragment. This Okazaki fragment is covalently joined to this green primer right here. It's covalently joined right here. It is not joined to this primer over here covalently. It's just, it's next to it, but it's not joined covalently, okay? And again, these red things right here are just Okazaki fragments, all right? Then what's gonna happen, not shown in this picture, DNA polymerase one, which, is, which happens to be the polymerase up here, DNA polymerase one or Pol one then takes these RNA primers, and it basically just replaces them with the corresponding DNA basis. So after this, you would see red here, red here, red here, red here. Basically, all the green RNA primers get replaced with more DNA. So in other words, this green fragment right here, this primer, if its sequence was, say, A, G, U, C, U, then after the Paul 1 act, it would be A, G, T, C, T. In other words, it's exactly the same sequence except for U's are replaced with T's because we don't have U's in DNA. Now, the problem is there wouldn't be technically connected covalently. For example, this DNA strand would not be covalently bound to this one. And so we have a final enzyme called DNA ligase that basically connects all the fragments together to create a complete strand, okay? So that's kind of in words and a picture what it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a video and we're going to watch it and I'm going to kind of explain it as we go. And you'll see, hopefully it'll make a lot more sense. This right here is the leading strand. So this is just, it's going to synthesize as normal, pretty simply, continuously from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Now it's continuous. The lagging strand on the other hand is discontinuous. Down here we have the lagging strand of the DNA. In this video, for this purpose, the red parts are Okazaki fragments, the DNA fragments, and these green parts are RNA primers. And it's going to go over here, and this enzyme right here is called DNA primase. Sometimes they'll call it RNA primase. It's the same enzyme. It's basically just an enzyme associated with DNA polymerase that generates RNA primers. But you'll see it written both ways. And this green thing that's coming out of it is an RNA primer. Now we have this enzyme polymerase 3, 
And you'll see what it's going to do. It's going to synthesize a DNA strand using that RNA primer. So this RNA primer and this DNA strand, they're actually covalently bound. And this, this DNA polymerase 3 is going to synthesize this strand 5 prime to 3 prime. And it's going to go right up until, and you'll see, it's going to go right up until it hits the next RNA primer. And then it'll basically dissociate. Okay? Now, here's polymerase 1. It's going to come in here and basically chop up all these RNA bases and replace them with the corresponding DNA bases. So this is a different polymerase. It has some other activities that the other one doesn't. There you go. But now you see these two strands, they're actually not physically connected. They're not covalently bound. So this enzyme should be our DNA ligase. And it's going to actually glue those Okazaki fragments together. And then that process is basically just going to repeat over and over again. So let's watch that one more time. Let's find the right part to start. All right, let's just review. So DNA polymerase, this is actually Paul one um, it's going to bind, it's going to all the other associated enzymes, the topoisomerase, helicase, break the strands apart. You see these single-stranded binding proteins. They're actually going to bind to single strands and prevent the DNA strands from re-annealing. And, the, and the, the leading strand of DNA is just going to be synthesized easily, 5' prime to 3' prime, in a continuous nature. Again, down here we have the lagging strand of DNA. It also has to be synthesized 5 prime to 3 prime, but it's going to be done so discontinuously through the use of Okazaki fragments, these red small fragments of DNA. Here's our DNA primase, or RNA primase, as some uh, sources will call it. It generates an RNA primer. Then polymerase 3 comes and it binds to the end of the RNA primer and you get a new strand of DNA that goes 5 prime to 3 prime all the way until the polymerase 3 reaches the next RNA primer that's already bound to the DNA. Then polymerase 1 comes and it's going to basically chop up all those RNA bases from the primer and replace them with DNA bases. And then the two DNA strands that are not connected yet covalently DNA ligase is effectively just going to glue those together, and that process is just going to repeat over and over again, and that is synthesis of the lagging strand. Again, in this video, I don't go into the leading strand because it's really easy, really straightforward. Um, I do have a video where I go into the organic mechanism on a molecular level of that enzyme, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, the only one that's really complicated is the lagging strand. So hopefully this made sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.